Fran Alessandro invited me to, to take uh, part in these talks I was singing. So what's really still interesting for the audience and what's going to be the audience for such a topic? So it seems that the, the airport is still a relevant topic. The airport is still looks, I would say, sexy. And, <laughs> and uh, the airports, it's the ones which most of you and most of everybody is using, either more often or not. But still, we, we all like to fly. We all love to fly. And we already uh, probably like honored drugs by the low-cost carriers and the policy which stimulated traffic and definitely now we we kind of always searching for best best solutions to travel for leisure first of all and of course uh, that's the way how the business works these days and uh, that's a way which is really needed to for daily business communication as well so the airlines is important, but uh, the airport is not less important because the airlines has to land somewhere to serve uh, to serve us. So, um, well, it's uh, I made some brief uh, on what we're going to talk today, uh, and uh, this is uh, really about the airports. Uh, it's not like airport efficiency is that one works better and uh, and another one is not but it's it's all about really different interests which uh, the private manager or the airport as a company has and the interest not less important that the state has on the airports and how the state sees the airport and how the managing company sees the airport. And it's a matter about, of course, first of all, which is everybody emphasizes, as for each business entity, which is to make a profit, to make a return to the shareholder, which is in some cases is a private shareholder, in some cases is not, it's a state, but nevertheless, if we talk from a different angles, we should understand that it's a, it's a different drivers who, uh, and different interests that both the, the different shareholders has on the same infrastructure. So that's the topic of today. And I really um, would like you to participate as well. So my, my uh, at least, idea for today is uh, to give you the short intro to you on the airports. And then I would like to have your involvement where it will be possible. So your actions is also very important to make this talk uh, even more interesting and exciting. So before I start, I would say from what I what I learned over these years being in the airport, also working in the in the government, it's really very critical that uh, that uh, the state has some ambition on the airport strategy. If there is no ambition, there is no future. And I'm really talking not about the ambition of CEO or this, the team which manages the airport. I'm talking about the state. And from that comes of what kind of management is needed for the airport and how it could be managed. Either to, to ask the private operator to come and manage or you can handle by, the, by, it, uh, by himself as a state. So, that's very, very, very important thing. Ambition, ambition, and ambition. From, from that starts the rest of it. So what we have today in Europe, just some short, some statistics, uh, and uh, what kind of industry we're talking about. It's a 500 airports in, in Europe, and if we're talking about the European Union, it's 355 airports. Uh, it's uh, 
2.6 billion passengers are carried over these airports uh, over, over a year, every year, and the numbers is growing. That's a big number. We actually, the 12 million people, over 12 million people work in aviation, in, in the airport industry. Uh, so it's a big, big, big impact to the Europeans' GDP, which accounts for 4.1 percent. So airports been developing a lot over 20 years. We saw the obvious shift from the uh, from the infrastructure managers, which is used to be all the time, all over the world. But definitely the economics, the, the business approach were developing and that's touched upon the airports as well. So today we see the airports as a, as a really uh, business focused commercial entities. And there is different ways of managing that. Um, so 500 airports, or let's say we get to the European Union, 355 airports on the 28 countries, well, 28 so far, member states. So if we divide 355 to 28, we see we have a, not one or two airports within a country. It's a tenth of airports in each country. Even Lithuania with a three million population, we have three civil airports and another one, which is like double, double uh, airports, civil and military. So overall population of, of 3 million, it's quite a lot. It's too much. So what's, then it's a question, why we need this airport? Maybe it's efficient to, to close all of them, to stay with one. Yes, this is a solution. Is the best from a state perspective? I doubt it. Is it the best if we talk about a private investor approach? Yes, definitely. It's a really, overall, it's hard to maintain them comp these airports busy and to make them profitable, each of them. The same, uh, the same goes all over Europe. If we talk, 47% of airports are loss making. And out of this for out of these 47 percent, 76 percent is the airports which has uh, less than one million passengers. Coming back to Lithuania, Vilnius, close to four million, Kaunas, 800 and uh, Palanga a bit over 200,000. So if we let them live on their own, we, we lose two airports. What shall we do? That's again, this, this talks, this lesson, uh, this lecture is all about also getting your local content, local uh, actualities, because that's what really uh, matters for all of us being here. So, ownership, then, you know, uh, of course the best is to give, over, give away to the, to the private operator and let them live and let them work in there. But then seeing these numbers, uh, it's a question of how to make this, uh, this airport network working as uh, ma making money at the end of the day, because otherwise the, uh, the system would not work. It will be not interesting case for the private operator to come because it's a loss making money a machine. So private operator having only one interest to make a profit, it's, it's, it would not be interesting. So the task another one for the, for the, comp, uh, for the, uh, for the state, how to make it attractive. Uh, it's obvious there are a the lot of cases in Europe which is easy to, to achieve profitability and some of the airports they are very profitable. 
talking about Heathrow Airport, talking about Stansted Airport, talking Frankfurt Airport, etc., etc. That's a big, big uh, enterprises, big factories, which really makes a lot of money. But at the same time, the airports really serves as accessibility to the to the regions, to remote regions. It's a s bit sad to say, but we also, as a country, are in a remote region of in within European Union. So we need connectivity. Connectivity drives business. Connectivity drives investments. Connectivity drives uh, tourism, etc., etc., etc. So it's again up to the state to manage it. This might be simple, probably, saying that. Uh, uh, you know, you can invest the budget money to the airports and then keep it going. Yes, but there is a restriction on the European Union that you cannot do that as a state because you it's, it's you are not uh, you are not using this uh, private investor principle. You cannot invest in the loss-making businesses as a state. So environment really dictates that you have to look for some cooperation into the private investor where you have to combine and balance between the profit which the private entity should make and also ensure that your, your, your interests as a state interest are considered. Uh, so then it comes uh, really question to the To the essence, like uh, what are the opportunities and wha what are the threats there? So, what are the different shareholders' perspective? And uh, it's like coming back to the context of Lithuania: is it really worth closing down two airports and leaving one, or shall we have it uh, still up and running? What opportunities it brings at the same time? So what is your opinion? How the state should act? I would say, I will rephrase my question. What, where lies the extra opportunities maintaining more airports than you want? It means how you handle your overcapacity. Any thoughts? What do you mean by handling overcapacity? I'm coming back to that uh, even in a small markets uh, where mostly most money are made from uh, passenger traffic. In a small markets, you you have you need some capacity to handle efficiently the the traffic and to make money. But if you have a small country like Lithuania again, you have three airports with a three million population, you don't need three airports. Actually, it costs too much and it's not needed for, from a passenger perspective. So, you have three runways, you have three terminals, which most likely you can live with, with only one. You don't need three runways. You don't need free terminals. What do you do with airports? What opportunities this overcapacity of uh, runways, of uh, aprons, of the uh, terminals brings to you? So there is cargo, import, export. Exactly. That's the one. Military stuff. Military, military stuff. Yes. Charter flights? Yes. Anything else? General. Yes, exactly. That's what that's the point is. That you not only manage the passengers, you look at the options of developing aviation industry, attract investors, uh, get them in uh, uh, get them involved, get them invest, create the environment where they would like to work. And that comes the state interest on that. Because if you create that environment interesting uh, to, to whom 
uh, the, this infrastructure would be interested actually by that you encourage uh, or let's say you create new workplaces you make a new jobs you create a new jobs you, you create the high paid jobs you encourage the universities to invest and to run the studies to supply the industry, developing industry, with the manpower. By that, you also increase the business opportunities because it's a supported business which is needed for, for MRO or for any other aviation industry uh, businesses settled around the airport. But, there is one big but it would never pay off directly. You will not turn it into the profits as, a, as an entity, as a probably airport manager. And, uh, and that would be the, the loss making overall. In a bigger scale than you talk from a state perspective, yes, it makes sense. So this is about that really combining the interests and interest in the big scale interests it's not about the traveling it's also about the workplaces it's all about the workplaces for most of you who study aviation and uh, would like to spend the life working in the aviation industry so this is comes to the ambition what I mentioned ambition of a state how they manage it and what they do with it and that comes to the very essence of of uh, of uh, of a strategy building i can bring you one example when you talk about uh, uh, the models which been used uh, in the different countries atlanta airport atlanta airport holds the title of being the busiest airport in the world for 17 years since 20 to, since 2000 uh, it's a funny uh, that actually every year they think that it's the last year they hold this title because they know that in any case they will be overtaken by Beijing or some any other Asian Asian airport um, of course Beijing is very close to him to them by figures by passenger figures uh, but uh, but they are still 10 million behind so Atlanta Airport the busiest airport in the world they make a revenue of four bit more than 400 million dollars a year 400 million dollars um, I can I did not look for some figures, but then talk about like Frankfurt, which is uh, Frankfurt Airport is is in something on a second tenth of the uh, busiest airport in the world. Their revenue as a, as for the airport it goes in a in a billions. Why so? It's because, for example, landing fee for the cargo freight uh, uh, in Atlanta it costs one dollar. So actually, they live on the on a cost basis. They don't care about the profits. And why so? Because Atlanta City, the owner of the Atlanta Airport, they said actually we need the airport to 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 facilitate the business. And they have calculated that the Atlanta Airport really responsible or accounts for four, for 32 billion of uh, dollars for the state for Atlanta for Atlanta city and the state so 1 billion revenue maybe 2 billion revenues versus 32 billion that's a solution which really works and uh, this is what what how the shareholder 
of course, at the same time, let's say the, the public sector, the shareholder, really solves the solution. He sees the bigger picture. And he gives the directions for the managers to do it. Even though I would say that this company could be really make a generator millions and tens and hundreds of millions of, of profits. But it's not the case for the state from a state perspective. So really like summarizing on that, the, the private operator would really never invest into infrastructure which doesn't make any sense for them in uh, from a return point of view. No. Would the state do? Yes. Uh, so it's a question how how you can evaluate because also we have for, from a state you have also another thing to consider it's about the publicity it's about the transparency and etc so the one important thing which has to be identified and uh, and really made it very clear of what are priorities and how they are measured and how you measure return. So then we come to the, to the very mathematical methods which proved that it has to be in place. And you calculate the different things. You calculate how many workplaces you created, how, many, how much you invested in order to create workplaces, how much investments from private business you attract, what is the primary effect to your country's economy? What's the secondary effect to, uh, to, the, to the, your country's economy? And what is non-direct effect to the country's economy? That's, that's the way. Uh, now the tools of how to manage it. As I said from very beginning, Either you do it your own, on your own as a state, either you're doing, you're doing from a private, uh, with the help of a private uh, operator, or you privatize the airport. All, all things really can work, and all f there is no one solution. It all comes to the individual case, and it all comes to the, to the priorities of the of the state. Uh, at the same time, it's, it's also very in interesting that you have to make sure that the state would not spend any money. So self-sustainable on a cost base is still okay, but you have to find a way to make also, if you talk about the private operator, you have to find a way of uh, of uh, really uh, managing it. Even in the best case scenario, maybe getting some, some, uh, some fees uh, on a concession, if there is a concession case. So um, getting back to, to the, our local environment, Lithuania. We have three airports mentioned, civil airports. Generally, they are okay, they're making a business, but what, business, but what next? A state has difficulties of running it uh, on their own. Uh, maybe a state does not really know how to handle properly. Uh, and uh, coming back to what we've been thinking when I was in the ministry and really, what are the solutions? Uh, so, in a, in, a, in a situation that actually uh, you have a surplus of infrastructure, you don't need that many airports. Uh, you have quite a high cost of maintaining these airports. What do you do? So we came into the point that, well, most likely, the best way forward is really to, to, to bring uh, the private operator into the play and go on a concession way. A lot of calculations have been done 
a lot of uh, evaluations being done, uh, a lot of discussions took place, and uh, well, it seems that, not it seems, we really uh, identified that, that there is a business case even for private op operator to step in. How it would be uh, completed or uh, how it will be, be finished, I don't know. I hope that it will accelerate after the new government's first year of, op of, of activities or being in power and getting already familiar with all the things happening, uh, not only in aviation, but overall. So that comes again, what kind of ambition the current government has. Uh, so, scenarios are quite clear. It's a matter about the implementation. Um, at the same time, I would like to address, in this context, I would like to address a question to you. Do you see and you think there is another way to, to manage the Lithuanian airports? Or maybe, on, uh, or what would be the reason of closing down the two airports and staying as a country with one? What is your opinion? Well, I don't know about all three airports, but I did some research. I'm studying in my aviation management program, bachelor's, and made some reports regarding all the three airports. And what I find out is in Padanga Airport, Claypit is very near, and usually the ships, ship cargo, or sending and exporting something into or out of Lithuania is much more cheaper doing by the ship than you know sending by the air. And there are a lot of restrictions, so I don't see any point running the Palanga Airport because the traffic in the winter time is almost none because nobody usually comes around there. And in the summertime also, the usually traffic is from Russia side of the small planet or some other charter flights, that's it. So you can directly connect to Kaunas and make sense. Operate Shole may be much more for the cargo purposes because it has some military uh, presence over there. And in Kaunas and Vilnius you can handle other because they are quite, not far, but by flying time it's 10, 15 minutes, but of course ships cannot come here to export something. So it's much more cheaper within the internal transport to just handle by trucks or something. Okay. So the point of running Palanga Airport in the terms of the research which I did and it makes sense that there is a port over there, so airport doesn't make any sense. I fully, complete, uh, I fully agree with you, but now I would like to place you in a position, theoretically, in a position of decision maker. Let's say you are the Minister of Transport, and then you announce that you are closing down Palanga Airport. Mm -hmm. How do you deal that with the clip of the community and the clip of the business and Palanga business? which says that we need the tourists, we, we need an inbound tourist, we need the connectivity, convenient connectivity for the, for the Clyde with the seaport business. Mm -hmm. And you, by that decision, you destroy the regional connectivity, it means that we will be losing the investments, we will be losing the attractiveness, and as a, as a region, will be completely unattractive. But what do you say? But recently I heard in the news that they, uh, they connected the rail transport to the Palanga directly from Vilnius. There is always a railway connection. Yeah, so then uh, why exactly you need an airport which, like, for example, Kaunas Airport also in the terms of weekly flights, it's, uh, if our Vilnius Airport is doing in one day 60 flights, Kaunas is doing seven. I have the technical data and stuff like that also, I know that know this and I'm talking just not so previous just the last winter schedule of these all three airports and Palanga had it just one or two flights a day so it really uh, I think so there is not so much jobs available anyway throughout the winter or winter time in the airport so if two people lose that job they can easily be replaced in the good business which is giving you more money which is the port of Klaipeda or the sea connectivity 
So the solution is yeah, giving 90% to one business and 10% to another. So it's better to give 100% to one business which can give you maybe more opportunities later on because in the airport you are sitting and doing at the same place you're not promoting yourself because as you're not making any business or money and if you give 100% for one business so you can develop much more things in that and you know if the commonness and business airport is still there you can reach within 2-3 hours maximum and just fly and you know tourists are still there okay then I'm putting you in the businessman position and then uh, you're looking for investment opportunities. It doesn't matter, it's not aviation. You need some manufacturing facilities. And you are you placed in ah, Scandinavia. It's a lot of Scandinavian investments in Lithuania overall, in the Baltics. So uh, and your business relates to a lot of traveling. Uh, from headquarters, not only you as a CEO, but also uh, your staff uh, uh, from headquarters to the to the branch. Would you choose Clyper as a location if you will need about two, three hours driving after you land in a country to go to your facilities? Would you? Would I, as a businessman, yeah. Canada, would you choose the location of Klaipeda if you would not have an access in uh, with a, with a, you know half an hour uh, from airport to your facilities? Would you choose? But as a CEO, if I will mind my comfort and mind my time, so definitely not not only your personal comfort. Talking about you know that your staff really permanently traveling between headquarters and the manufacturing facilities mm -hmm. like you no know, 20 people yeah. would you choose Klaipeda as a destination for your investment by air travel no. so you see so that's an argument that the local community local businessmen and local politician would raise to you mm -hmm. and and that's that's a question which you should answer them. Otherwise, you will lose your votes being a politician, and you you will not continue your political career because you just ruined the airport. <laughs> that's a question. That's a very complex question. So that's why it's always not about the efficiency as we understand it fully from a very business perspective it's not about the profits it's not about the direct returns what I wanted to say uh, wrapping up this lecture is is really that very important for the state to understand the whole context and to identify the opportunities and opportunities lies not only in cargo or passengers it's just low hanging fruits, but nevertheless, the airport can really be very important uh, for the state, very important for the region, also for attractiveness, for the perspective, and the things we can, you can do either within the airport as well. That's the case we're talking about Kaunas. Uh, or it's still the business which could happen with the help of the airport as an infrastructure in the region. So this is a solution. To close down solution is the simplest one. But I all of you encouraging that if you would get upon the point in your life where you will have that questions, look beyond the PNL line and uh, evaluate the possibilities of and concerns and the opportunities which which airports can bring and airports brings a lot the atlanta uh, atlanta example is a, is a one of course it's a big airport it's a big market but still even for the small markets is even more important because we are not you know as again coming back to lithuania we are not the market which is attractive because we have a lot of, I mean, uh, 
don't know, natural resources, uh, we have a lot of people, etc., etc. We still have to find our place uh, in front of the sun. And infra infrastructure and airports is very important. Connectivity, connectivity, and connectivity. Regarding the uh, Palanga Airport, I think so. I think that right now it's very important to use it. Uh, why so? Because I think that small uh, region airports in the future will have uh, big opportunities regarding uh, short fly. Uh, short fly. Uh, if in aviation uh, we'll have the electric, uh, elect, uh, electrical aircrafts, because the speed uh, between, for example, uh, if we take Airbus or Boeing speed uh, between uh, Palanga and uh, Comas flight, for example, it's very, very low. So basically, uh, the main fuel consumption is going on the uh, get plane up and get plane down. So uh, from tourist and business line, uh, if Palanga uh, would have uh, 20 years uh, perspective in, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, business line with uh, these aircraft types. For example, to join Kalmas Vilnius uh, Stockholm uh, uh, Riga airports, it would be a very good solution for you know, fast travel. Yeah. And if we now would close to this airport, uh, after 20 years we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do anything we did because it would be ruined. Might. Yeah, well, yes, that's one of, uh, one of the options. I think one uh, other option might be to have a major stimulation of the traffic at Vilnius, which in turn would then, once it's developed so much, naturally drive more opportunities at the other two airports, because then you would m maybe think about putting cargo flights in there, having uh, uh, tourism charter flights going in there, etc. That will and, um, and Vilnius is, uh, um, forgive me, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm from the UK, <laughs> but I have been uh, a, a CEO of a couple of airlines and do look at airports very uh, seriously. And Vilnius is an airport that's mostly, not totally, but mostly uh, low cost airlines. And low cost is just origin and destination passengers. So people coming here or going from here, um, whereas if you have full service network providers, you can become a much larger operator. Um, I, I'll give the example of Luxembourg, which can, can manage to have a, um, a network a cargo airline provided in a tiny little country that's, that's even got its own uh, proper airline. So those, I think, are the major opportunities to, to develop Vilnius to such an extent through perhaps more full service providers so that there's a natural overspill to the other two airports. Yeah, well, that's, that's again. Um, an opportunity. So, do you have any questions or suggestions? <laughs> we can really write a write a memo and send it to the Minister of Transport. They probably appreciate uh, the independent ideas of how we can do, how we can improve more the the, the airport operations and uh, well, how we can build up a strategy, a long term strategy. Okay. Um, that's most likely it, what I wanted to say to you. It's better to make sh being shorter than being boring. So <laughs> I think um, at least I managed to keep your attention for some time and brought some, some elements in your understanding which was new for you or also made you more understanding the, the, the environment on where the state and the, and the private operator comes from, or even I would say the, 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 the country and the airport manager comes from. And it's a very important that we really find the balance uh, between these uh, views, interests, for the sake of the country. The airport is not the company one or company two working in a country. The airport is really very important country's asset in all means. So the first comes, even though it's a private airport, fully owned by a private operator, private shareholder, 
it's still the asset of a state. One question. If you speak about uh, Palanga, Palanga um, uh, is reported not only for Lithuanian, it's uh, good uh, right here. for uh, not only for Klaipeda, but in, for example for uh, Latvian uh, Leopaya. Yeah. And uh, there are cooperation uh, with uh, another countries. Well, yes, with the Schengen, uh, Schengen area, I mean, the border has been completely demolished, so we have, have really this exciting thing of free movements of people. So definitely uh, the catchment area for airports also increased. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, in Lithuania again, we see a lot of traffic from Latvia. In Palanga, we see quite a traffic uh, in Kaunas from Poland, from Latvia as well. In, Lefe in Vilnius, we have quite a obvious growth of traffic from Belarus, even to the border. So the less, the less possibilities the other countries has, the better is for us. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much then.